good morning. This is a way to a wonderful life. Please know with me now, right now, there is a power within you that can lift your life to its highest level. It can change illness into health. It can bring peace amidst turmoil. It can bring success out of failure and victory out of defeat. It can bring companionship and happiness out of loneliness. It responds to you, for this is the power that dwells within you, and so it is. Amen. Good morning. This is Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates coming to you live from Palm Springs, California. So let's take these words of power. Let's realize that the Spirit of God is within us, that in, in all things that we do, there is something within us that can strengthen us, something that will propel us into that greater thing, whatever it may be, that increase in health, that increase in wealth, that increase in joy and happiness, whatever it is that we desire to experience today, let's know that there is a presence, a power, spirit, and an intelligence that's seeking to give us all things necessary to strengthen us, to bring us into that that state of mind of confidence and encouragement that will get us through, around the thing, through the thing, transcending the thing, overcoming the thing, whatever it may be, as we recognize that we are a part of it and that it's a part of us and we identify with that Christ within us, that power within us, and realize that it can lift our life to its highest level, the highest level that we can imagine for ourselves, the highest level of health, the highest level of wealth, the highest level of success, the highest level of loving companionship, whatever it may be that we desire to experience, we can know today and every day that that desire is of the Father, and if it's of the Father, as Jesus said, it is the Father that doeth the work so we can surrender our ego to the Spirit, surrender that within us that, that does not accept, that which is holding us back, that which is blocking us, that which is obstructing us, and open our mind, our heart, and our soul to the Spirit, and let the Spirit lift us up, let the Spirit reign supreme in our mind, reign supreme in our heart, and reign supreme in our soul as we realize that today is the day the Lord hath made, and I am, I am rejoicing and giving thanks for it. I am rejoicing and giving thanks for it. Once again, this is the way to a wonderful life, and I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates coming to you live this morning from Palm Springs, California, teaching from the philosophy of the mastermind Jesus, the wisdom of the ancients, and the evolutionary science of mind. This program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited. It is live. For more information about this ministry, please visit www.revbates.tv or www.revbatesontheradio.org. You can also find me on YouTube.com by going to YouTube.com and putting in the search box The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel. That's The Way to a Wonderful Life Channel where you'll find over 80 of my radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. You can also go to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google and put in the search box Reverend Henry Bates. That's B-A-T-E-S. And you'll find everything you want to find out about this ministry. Now, for my full radio schedule, please go to www.revbatesontheradio.org where you'll find that this radio broadcast of the Way to a Wonderful Life is broadcast nine times a week, seven days a week, so that you can tune in and get turned on to that truth that will set you free. Once again, the Way to a Wonderful Life is a healing and teaching ministry and where we go beyond religion and we focus on those simple yet profound healing principles given to us by the mastermind Jesus so that we can believe in our prayer and the answer to it as we believe and we know that God responds to us by corresponding to our faith and our belief that with God 
All good things are possible. With God, all good things are possible. Now, you can send me your questions, your comments. You can send me your prayer requests, and you can send a faith offering in support of this radio ministry, and you can do that from the website RevBates.tv or RevBates on the radio.org using your ATM card or your credit card or your checking account through the PayPal Secure Payment System, or you can mail those to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, that's P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. And you can leave me a message in the Los Angeles area at 818-476-0088 or in Palm Springs at 760-778-5677. Once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, this program is not pre-recorded, nor is it edited, and our way to a wonderful life message for today is titled, The Money Enigma, The Money Enigma. Each week I continue to get many, many prayer requests from people who are struggling financially or who are trying to get themselves out of debt and into a home of their own. Some people want grand things and others simply want to be able to meet their expenses with something to share and to spare. Many have tried various ways to build a stronger financial security for themselves, but as someone told me, it seems like I just get a little money in the bank and then something happens and I am right back with no money to spare. And I am certain that this person is not alone in this experience or feeling this way about their finances. But God is a present help, a present help. But for many, seeking money through prayer or affirmation seems inappropriate. Yet we find throughout the ancient scriptures many affirmations and statements of faith where people have turned to God and in their time of need for a greater wealth and their prayers were answered and their prayers were answered. We can go to that first statement of the Lord's Prayer, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and that I shall not want applies to everything that we can think of in our life. I shall not want the Lord. That is the spirit of God, the intelligence of God, the power of God as it moves through my mind, my heart, and my soul and feeds myself, living the way I choose to live, having the things I choose to have, increasing everything that I've been blessed with, and blessing all those things into an expansion of a greater good. Those things, those things shall guarantee that I shall not want. And as we find from the mastermind Jesus, we realize that I have come that you may have life, he said, and you may have it more abundantly, that you may have it more abundantly, and that abundantly means every good thing we can think of. And as we go to the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said, Our Father, which art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and that bread, that bread symbolizes the good life, the joyful life, the happy life, the life lived with peace of mind and harmony, the life lived with prosperity and confidence and success, that bread symbolizes everything good that the Father has created for each and every one of us. And then we can go to Proverbs 10.22, and we can read, The blessings of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. In other words, we don't have to worry, we don't have to struggle, we don't have to fight, we just have to know that God does provide for us that which we require. No, no, no one can know, no one can believe, and no one can accept that this is true until we pray and have our prayer responded to, but we must find that correspondence in our own heart, our own mind, our own soul, through our faith and our belief that it is so. As the great, great mystical Neville said, we don't get what we want, we get what we believe to be true. And so let's go to Psalm 24.1, which is one of the, my favorite psalms in all the 150 psalms, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell within. They that dwell therein. So we know and we believe that if we are God's, that God is certainly going to provide for us. That that's power, this presence, this spirit, this image and likeness of God within each and every one of us is a part of God. And God will provide for us because God seeks to 
takes every good thing to, to move through our heart, our mind, and our soul that will bring us a greater joy and happiness, a greater feeling of uh, the awareness of the beauty in the world, or the awareness of the beauty in the people around us, and the awareness of the beauty within our own heart, mind, and soul as we realize that our prayers are answered. Now, the great Eric Butterworth writes in his book, Spiritual Economics, the first thing we must overcome is the feeling, the feeling of needing money. Have you had a time of financial stringency and cried out, I need money? It is a confusion of priorities. More importantly, we need faith. We need a flow of creativity. We need ideas. Actually, it could be said that our money needs us. As long as we have impressed on our money the thought of insufficiency, it will continue to move represent us in our time of need. But if we consciously imbue our money with the idea of abundance, knowing that it is part, coming from God, it is part of God, it will begin to work for us in a positive way. Suddenly, the seemingly little supply becomes dynamic seed money, seed money, giving rise to unbelievable increase. And that's Eric Butterworth in his book, Spiritual Economics. When we read in the Holy Scriptures that faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, we must establish in our consciousness that we create this evidence, this evidence through faith and belief that on the unseen side of life, our desire for financial increase, for health, for happiness, whatever it may be, is being responded to. As Jesus said, we must pray knowing that we have, and that faith is the evidence of that knowing that we have. And, it is, and each and every one of us, excuse me, each and every one of us has enough faith. We have an infinite capacity for faith, but we must choose it. We must recognize that we do, and we must choose to have the faith. I choose to have the faith that God is responding to me now. I choose to have the faith that within me there is a power, a presence, and a spirit that's calling me to accept this thing, to recognize this as mine, to claim it. In other words, to ask and you shall receive means claim it and you shall have it, but we must claim that which we know to be true for us, which we can accept to be true for us. Otherwise, we won't get it. So we must bring into our mind that increase that, 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 that makes us feel like this can happen for us, that this can be real for us, that this is a thing that God has for us. And so, therefore, if we know it to be true, if we can accept it and feel good about it and feel comfortable with it and see it as a normal extension of that which we already have, we will receive it. We will receive it. Our faith must be steadfast and immovable for the spiritual law of the spirit of mind is a law of sowing and reaping. Mind is spirit and spirit is mind, changeless and eternal in its operation in and through all that it contains because the living spirit of God includes you and me, is living in you and me. Our relationship with money gives us a first-hand and personal experience with God for God source of all things, including including the money that passes through our hands, whether it is a cash, whether it's checks, whether it's stocks and bonds, whether it's investment dividends, a welfare check, or a Social Security check. The originating idea that brought the money into our personal possession came from the one source which is God, came from the one source, which is God. If we doubt this, then we will never feel the truth that faith is the evidence. Underline that word evidence in your mind, the evidence of things not seen. And so we must learn to convince ourselves that this is so. We must take the time every day to create an image in our mind of that which we choose to experience, an image of, of our life being an increasing good, that more and more good and ever-increasing good is showing up every day in our life because our faith is steadfast and immovable. Our faith that God is responding to us by corresponding to that which we accept to be true for ourselves that takes nothing away from anyone else nor diminishes anyone in any way, shape, or form. We can believe it and we can receive it. So let's go back to some more words here from the great Eric Butterworth. He writes, the most important aspect of John 
John 3.16 is, For God so loved the world that he gave. God is the divine givingness of the universe, and we are created in the image and likeness of this divine givingness. We cannot make any sense out of life or realize the free flow of substance in our experience until we begin to see ourselves as a giver. It may mean a complete turnaround in our approach to life where we think give instead of get, where we think give instead of get. In our spiritual quest, we are seeking to establish ourselves in a unitive relationship with the divine flow. In other words, to align our mind with the infinite flow, with the infinite good, with the infinite source that God is, and when it does, when we discover the wonder of giving, we become unblushingly an incurable giver. Meditate long on this point, for it is one of the most important keys of the prosperity spiritual laws. Eric Butterworth, Spiritual Economics. Too often I have encountered people who believe that other people have the money, but they apparently don't, or so they believe they don't. And ideas like this held in our mind will ensure that we don't. Whatever it is that we feel or think we lack in life, the solution to making progress on receiving it or doing it or being it or having more lies in our willingness to give and to give freely. When we don't give when it is the right thing to do so, we suppress the givingness of the Spirit of God within us, and in doing so, we create an even greater lack in some area of our experience of life. Jesus taught that freely you have received, so so freely give. Freely you have received, so freely give. And this puts us in alignment with the law of sowing and reaping automatically. It is this allowing, allowing of the givingness of God to express through us that also gives rise, gives rise to the recognition in our mind of our faith and our belief that the infinite is present and available to us. When we give freely, we are giving something to ourselves. We are giving something to ourselves. Underline that, that phrase in your mind. When we give freely, we are giving something to ourselves that is far greater than the amount of money or whatever it is that we give because we are aligning our heart, our mind, and our soul to to be in tune with the infinite and the infinite abundance and the infinite good and the infinite happiness and joy and peace and love of the spirit and in doing so we are eliminating or diminishing any acceptance of lack or loss in our mind any acceptance of lack or loss in our mind let's go back to the wonderful words of, of dr eric butterworth the first thing we must overcome he says is the feeling of needing money have you had a time of financial lack or limitation and cried out, I need money. I need money. It is a confusion of priorities. More importantly, we need faith. We need a flow of creativity. We need ideas. Actually, it could be said that our money needs us. As long as we have impressed on our money the thought of lack or insufficiency, it will continue to misrepresent us in our time of need. But if we consciously imbue our money with the idea of abundance, knowing that it came from God and God can increase it, it will begin to work for us in a positive way way. Suddenly, the seemingly little supply becomes dynamic seed money, seed money, giving rise to unbelievable increase. That's from Eric Butterworth, the great unity teacher and great author. In his book, Christian Victory Instruction, by W. Frederick Keeler, he writes the following. About debts, he says, our feelings of worry and emotionalism will hold us to the debt. In other words, so many times when people don't have money, they're ashamed or they're embarrassed or they feel humiliated. So those feelings, those negative feelings, hold us to the lack, hold us to not having enough, hold us to not being able to freely live this life because 
because as we freely give, not only do we freely receive, but we are free free to live this life in a greater way. So we know that it is necessary for us to eliminate those feelings, any feeling that negates the, the power, the presence, the spirit of God, the intelligence of God within us. We must eliminate it from our mind, and we must do it immediately. So those things, those things that are not of God, those things that are not of the spirit, those things that negate the abundant life that God has created for all of us to enjoy must be eliminated from our mind. Worry and emotionalism hold us to death. The solution is not to let them move us, because when they stop moving us, we will move them. Heaven is bigger than death, so we must feel the peace and we must feel the trust in God that since someone trusted us, God, we can trust God to help us, to forgive us that whatever it is, to eliminate the debt. Pray freedom and spirit and in life. So I pray, I am free in spirit and free in life. I am free in spirit and free in life. I have everything necessary that I, that I require in order to live freely, to give freely, receive freely, and be in tune with the infinite and let the love of God, the joy of God, the spirit of God's happiness and peace move through my heart, my mind, and my soul as I know and I believe and accept as the truth for me that all my needs are met, all that I need to know, I know it when I need to know it, all that I need to do, I am compelled to act in right action, to do those things that are mine to do, to bring forth an increase in my life, an increase in my health, an increase in my joy, an increase in my prosperity, an increase in my, my love of life every day and every way. Pray, pray knowing that you, are, you can be free in the spirit and free in life as you turn to God and recognize that God is. God is your all in all. That God is the source. God is that thing within you that brings forth that image and likeness of that thing that you choose to do, that thing that you choose to be, and that thing that you choose to have, even though you can't hear it, feel it, taste it, or st- touch it in the material and the physical in this moment. Faith is the evidence, underline evidence, circle that word evidence in your mind, the evidence of, of the substance that is available. Faith is the substance, it is the evidence of things not seen, the evidence of things that are unfolding into our, into our experience in the most wonderful and glorious way if we let it. Now, Dr. Dr. Frederick Keeler tells us in his Christian Victory Instruction, he talks about supply, which is money, which is finance. He says our lack is a consequence of feeling desperation or always abused, a quarrel with ourselves, confusion, hopeless struggle, doubt, non-acceptance, disorder, and inharmony. How many of us have not doubted? How many of us have never felt desperate about something? How many of us have never felt like that we're hopeless to change? something. We all have felt it. We've all felt that, that self-abuse that we do to ourselves and when we shame ourselves and we blame ourselves and we quarrel with ourselves. We've all felt that confusion and that hopeless struggle and that doubt and that worry. But we must learn to go above it, rise above it, transcend it into the spirit to that which is that which is free, that which is life itself, that which is glorious and that which is, is glorifying God in the most wonderful and beautiful way that we can imagine imagine for ourselves. We must give freely as we give our mind, our attention, our thoughts, our images of, to God so that God can respond to them. Our image of ourselves being healthy, our image of ourselves being happy, our image of ourselves being prosperous, our image of ourselves as giving and receiving, freely giving, freely receiving, and enjoy, enjoying this thing called life in a greater way and being in tune with the infinite and in that being in tune with the infinite, we're in tune with the infinite good and we can draw unto us all things necessary through the spirit of the law of God as it blesses us, heals us, and prospers us right where we are. But we must know it, we must accept it, we must recognize it, we must identify it, and we must declare it as our truth. Ask and you shall receive means to claim that which we, which, which, we, we, which we want to experience, which we desire to experience, to claim that which we want to be, to claim 
own that which we want to do. Each and every one of us can do it. Each and every one of us can have it. Each and every one of us can be that thing that that image of us that we see in our mind tells us is ours to be, ours to do, ours to have. But we must take the time to do it. We must take the time to recognize God, to recognize this power, this spirit, this intelligence that moves through all things, this living spirit that's within us, that's bringing to our awareness a greater life, a more joyful life through the images and through the impressions in our mind, the thoughts that take us out of the ordinary into the extraordinary, the, th the thoughts that take us out of the lack and limitation into the prosperous and the good, the lack and the limitation will soon pass away as our mind is focused, as, as our mind is uh, given, is, uh, is, uh, is attentive to that which is more, more and more good, and ever increasing good, more and more good is mine, let's say it, more and more good good is mine, and ever increasing good is mine. Right now, right where I am, God is blessing me. Right now, right where I am, God is healing me. Right now, right where I am, God is prospering me. As my mind is filled with prosperous thoughts, as my mind is filled with the thought of health and happiness and joy, as my mind is filled with confidence and love, as my mind is filled with giving and receiving, as my mind is filled with the idea that God has put me here to have enough to share and to spare in all things. So as we look honestly at what Mr. Keeler has written and are willing to change our thoughts, change our thoughts, and control our emotions through faith and prayer and silent communion with God, we can begin to affirm, as the ancients did in the Holy Scriptures, that God is a present help in time of need, and begin to declare that as we trust in the power and the intelligence of God to bring to our awareness the right ideas, the right guidance, and the faith and the trust to see ourselves with, with, with our debts and financial struggle as part of our history, part of our past, but no longer present with us in faith, debt, and financial struggle won't move us. We will move them out of our life forever, out of our life forever. Once again, let's look at those, those ancient scriptures that just cried out for us to believe in them, to just look, just look at these words, the blessing of the Lord. Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. This was written in the book of Proverbs, can you imagine, so many thousands of years ago that this came to someone's mind and they wrote it down. This came to someone's mind because they had the realization that it was the truth for them. And it was the truth for them and it's the truth for us now because the truth is eternal and the truth is changeless. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for us. That's for it. That's Proverbs 10, 22. And let's go to Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. And so we know that we are a part of God, that there's an image and likeness of God within us, that not only is God surrounding us, moving against us, pressing against us, above us, below us, just like the air that we breathe and just like the gravity that moves us us physically and responds to us automatically, we know that the power, the presence, the spirit, the intelligence of God is right where we are, that each and every one of us have been blessed with the, with the uh, image and the likeness of God, a part of God's power, a part of God's spirit, and a part of God's intelligence. So we must, we must give God something intelligent to respond to, and God will correspond to that intelligent idea, that intelligent idea that says there is a greater help for me, a greater joy for me, a greater wealth for me, a greater prosperity for me, and I am blessed every day. So let us take it into our mind. Let's say it a thousand times today. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Say it to yourself. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. God is blessing us, healing us, prospering us right now. So open your mind to receive it. Open your mind to accept it. Open your mind to say, I am 
am. I am blessed today. I am feeling the power of the presence. I am feeling that, that marvelous sensation of knowing that in God all things are good. And my mind, my heart, and my soul is in tune with the infinite today, the infinite good, the infinite love, the infinite joy, the infinite peace, the infinite whatever it is that, that I can imagine for myself. I take my part of it. I claim my part of that allness of the good, knowing that God, God desires for me to have it, to experience it, and to be it, and so it is, amen, and so it is, amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me this morning. It's been my great pleasure to have you, and I hope you join me for my next broadcast right here on KTYM AM 1460 Radio and at com worldwide this coming Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. in the Midwest. And be sure and visit YouTube.com and put in the, the search box, The Way to a Wonderful Life channel, where you'll find over 80 of my radio broadcasts that you can listen to 24-7 in both English and Spanish. And go to MSN, Yahoo, Bing, and Google and put in the search box, Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, and you'll find everything you want to find about this ministry. And for my full radio schedule, please go to www.rebbatesontheradio.org. And as you begin to freely give and freely receive, please feel free to think about giving to this radio ministry and allow yourself to be a part of this expansion of sending this message out to the world through the radio and through the Internet. And you can be a part of it by going to rebbates.tv or rebbatesontheradio.org and make a contribution, a donation, a love offering, a faith offering, using your ATM card or your credit card or your checking account with the PayPal secure payment system, or you can mail those donations, prayer requests, questions, comments, faith offerings to Reverend Henry Bates, that's B-A-T-E-S, P.O. Box 1173, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Once again, this is Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates affirming that God is blessing us right now, right where we are. Until next week, keep the faith. Keep the faith with God. Keep the faith with the good. Keep the faith with all wonderful and beautiful things. And know that you are in God and of God.